now turn our attention to Queensland. In fact, not just one of Queensland's finest, but one of Australia's finest over the last generation is Soren Monkong Tong, who's the featured fighter on this week's Fighter Profile. I'm Soren Monkong Tong from Nuggets Gym in Queensland. I've had about 90 fights. I lived and trained in Thailand for three years and fought on Thai TV Channel 7 five times. I've won the Intercontinental title in two different weight divisions. I started training when I was about 13 years old. Nugget, my trainer, I used to see him and a group of fighters running past my house every day. So I just went down to check it out and see what was going on and I uh, just fell in love with it. I went on and had my first fight when I was 15. I came away, I got the win and I just fell in love. I just wanted to do it again and just get that, that rush of winning and challenging yourself and meeting those challenges. In the red corner, the Australian and Oceania champion, Soren Mongkong Tong. 2007, I moved to Thailand. Um, I started training out of Eminent Air and that's when I started having some big fights. I got the opportunity to fight Oranor on Channel 7 Live in Thailand. He was a, a Thai legend, really. He's uh, one of the most famous Thais in Thailand. All the Thais love him. I, I beat him by a judge's decision. And it's one of the first times I'd won in Thailand on judge's decision. I'd lose, usually lose on points or win by knockout. And then to be able to win by the judges was, uh, it was a pretty big deal to me because I'd finally figured out how to, to play the game and fight so that the judges liked me. Everyone knew who I was, you know. It's 20 million people watch it on Sunday afternoon on Thai TV. And you know, I was hopping, you know, walking up the street, I'd hop in taxis and people would know who I was because white people don't fight on Channel 7. And to do so well just really set me off for my things to come in Thailand. So 2007 as well, I'd been living in Thailand most of the year and I'd come back to Australia and they wanted me to go on the Contender Asia. The Contender Asia was a reality TV show for Muay Thai, so it was a, a bit of a surreal time in my life. My first fight on the, in the Contender was against Alan Sylvester from Canada. Uh, it was a good fight. I ended up stopping him with a cut from my elbow, um, and then I made it to the final five and I fought Jabba. I'd been with him in the house for about six weeks um, and you know, we were friends, well I th thought we were friends and you know if you, if you fight your, like your brother or your friend you kind of hit each other then you hit me then I hit you harder then you hit me harder and it kind of escalates. That was my mentality going into the fight with Jabba um, and he didn't have that mentality at all. He was just coming in to knock me out. Anyone that's seen it knows it's a pretty vicious knockout. I uh, went straight from the contender house straight to hospital. I was in hospital overnight. And I just remember sitting in the hospital bed just kind of piecing together the whole experience of what had gone, out, gone on. And just, uh, it was probably one of the lon loneliest times in my life. I was in Singapore by myself in a hospital room, not really knowing how I'd got there. And I just, it, Looking back now, it's what made me stronger, really made me grow and become a stronger person. First time I fought Sean Wright, it was a tough fight. Um, he reopened my cut, that I just took the stitches out, but I beat him on points. Uh, and then I fought Sean Wright the second time on Evolution. Um, I'd cut him quite badly in the, first, in the second round on his forehead here. Oh, and he's cut! He is cut over the left eye, Sean Wright! And that's a bad cut! That is a bad gas! That's a, that's a nasty cut. That is a nasty cut. Oh, this one could be over. That is a very deep and nasty gas over the eye of Sean Wright. But personally, I think they probably should have stopped it. There was a lot of blood. Um, but he kept, kept coming forward and, and the cuts nearly joined up. He had a massive V in his forehead. The cut elbow and a trusty elbow from Surin! That cut, if it's possible, has become even deeper. It's hard because I'm kind of friends with him. 
you know, I wanted the fight to end, but you know, when you've when you've got a friend in the in the corner and you know he's bleeding everywhere and you want the fight to stop, but you know you don't want him, you don't want to hurt him. Yeah, what what do you do? And really, they they want to just maybe uh, pull this one up because. He's not going to win the fight. He's not going to knock Soren out, and that cut's only going to get worse. Oh, he walks into an uppercut elbow, and that vertical cup has been made even cheaper. Brian Murphy, the referee, ended up stopping it in the fifth round. There it goes, and that's probably a good decision from the Murph to call this one up. Nothing to be gained. Bruce McPhee, the preacher, uh, fought him three times. Uh, it was my last ever fight, um, and going going into the fight, I can remember I was sitting in the um, dressing room. Daddy Cool fought just before me, um, and I was alone in the dressing room, which is kind of rare at a fight show. And I was starving at the time, and I looked at Preacher, who was about probably 80 odd kilos. I would have been about 73, and I just didn't want to fight him. I just knew it was time, but it's too late to get out of it, so I had to get in the ring and. Put my put my fighter's hat on, and I got in there and I got the job done. But I knew I knew before the fight that uh, it was going to be my last fight. I knew I just, was just over it. I stopped fighting. Then Nuggets pretty much based in Thailand full time, so I'm running the gym. I want to expand. I want to. Uh, definitely move the gym to a bigger facility, more have more fighters, but keep that uh, you know authenticity of having quality Muay Thai in Australia. You know, you got to keep your eye on the prize. You got to stay focused. You know, there's a lot of distractions in life, but you need to know what you want to do, and you need to stay focused on it along the way. He's one guy that has given his absolute for the sport, whether it's inside the ring or now as it is outside of the ring.